So we've reviewed two guidelines, one in the UK, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, and then another body here in the US, the American Psychological Association, and neither one of these bodies have evaluated EMDR therapy as a treatment for unipolar depression. So right now, we're not in these guidelines as a recommended treatment. Well, at the time that we wrote this paper, about two years ago it was published, there were about a, two dozen studies on EMDR that's been published, and half of about half were RCTs, which are randomized controlled trials. So when bodies such as NICE and APA that I mentioned evaluate treatments, they would only consider RCTs. So we, have, we had about 12 RC, RCTs at that point. Eight were standalone, um, standalone, where EMDR was a standalone treatment. So they examined EMDR as a standalone treatment for unipolar depression, and then four others, RCTs, examine EMDR as an add-on to another treatment. And then the other half of those studies were cohort studies or case studies um, that were also, you know, pretty okay, but they're not considered. When these bodies consider treatments for, for um, mental health, they only consider RCTs. So out of the eight RCTs that we've done where EMDR is a standalone treatment, we've compared EMDR to cognitive behavioral therapy, trauma-informed therapy, um, treatment as usual, and a wait list. And then four of the add-on treatments compared EMDR as an add-on to CBT on an antidepressive depressant medications. So we've got some good studies, but they're they're few. They're they're insufficient really at this point. Um, actually, our results are pretty compelling. For those for having so few studies, we've got pretty good results. As a standalone treatment, EMDR has been found to be effective for unipolar depression, and it's not just effective, you know, at until after post treatment, but at follow ups as well. So, so the participants actually maintain the the if um, the you know they maintain the results post treatment for for a month, sometimes six months, or sometimes up to a year, depending on how long the follow ups are. And then as an add-on treatment, EMDR has also been found to be effective. Um, it's more effective than, than trauma-informed um, CBT, but it's found to be as effective compared to CBT. So there's some inconsistencies in the, in the studies at this point. So we need more studies to iron out those differences. Yeah, there are two things um, I, I think that really stands out. One is that EMDR as an add-on treatment helps hasten treatment. And then it also helps with medication compliance, especially and in, in specifically antidepressant medication. So participants were more compliant in actually taking their antidepressant medication. So those I think those that's really important findings and useful findings. And then the other, and the, we've only had one tree-arm study, so it was EMDR as an add-on to CBT, EM, and then assertiveness training as an add-on to CBT, and treatment as usual as an add-on to CBT. So it's a tree-arm study where they compared these three types of treatments. And what was found is that CB, EMDR with CBT was very effective was more effective than the other two arms. So I think that was also pretty notable findings. So those were the two things that really stands out so far. Well, currently, there is a multi-site research that's going on, which includes three centers, two in Italy, one in Turin, Italy, Rome, Italy, and then my center here in Manhattan, Kansas. And we're focused on comparing EMDR to CBT with adults with unipolar depression. And our goal for this particular study is to overcome some of the methodological shortcomings of current studies that have been published, um, such as the number, the sample size, 
um, pre-post diagnostic assessments and a few other things. So we're trying to overcome those shortcomings and having a multi-site study really helps in terms of the diversity of cultures as well as it improves the sample size. And then for future research, there's quite a few things that we can do and really should do. Like um, looking at different types of depression, postpartum depression hasn't been studied. Bipolar, we need more studies on bipolar depression. There have been a few um, and very few researchers focus on that. The seasonal depression is another one. Um, dysthymia or persistent depression, which is long-term depression, that's another form of depression that needs to be studied. And in child and adolescent, and I know that we have researchers who are doing that, but those are the different, so really the different types of depression, not just unipolar depression.